Hey there you guys, uh, welcome back. Uh, I was asked today, how coincidentally, um, how to uh, cut back orchid flowers. Um, I assume they were talking about Phalaenopsis, because Phalaenopsis is the uh, the most common one that you, you could buy um, out there. So I'm, I'm going to do that. Uh, coincidentally enough, uh, the question was, how do I cut back the old spike, where do I cut it back, and where uh, will I look for the new spike that comes out? Well, uh, conveniently, I have some flower spikes that are dying, as you can see, and right here, whoop, and some flowers fall off, and I also have a new little baby spike. So, uh, I'll bring you in closer, and, uh, we'll look at this together, we'll cut some off, and I'll, I'll show you what I'm, what I'm doing with mine. Um, there really isn't a right or wrong way to do this. Uh, personal preference, uh, if you leave the, uh, if your flower spike is green still, like this one, I don't know whether you can see that, this one is still green, there's no, uh, will it focus it on here, on here? I don't know how some people can focus their cameras, mine never wants to focus on what I wanted to focus on. Um, anyway, see how this one is still green there? Uh, it's not brown, it's not shriveled up, it's not dead looking. Uh, you can, you can keep that it might produce some more flower buds off to the end or it might produce the little plantlet or, or cakey off of the side which is kind of like a spider plant does it, it just uh, you'll start getting leaves and then little baby roots on the plant and then eventually when it's of a size you can cut it off um, so that option is there uh, I tend to like to leave these flower spikes on the ones that have not dried up or anything um, but some people prefer to have them stay on uh, or come come off. Uh, it's said that uh, when it does produce new buds, uh, the new buds are not as showy as the uh, if if uh, it's a primary spike, the original spike. Um, these secondary spikes just just don't have the same show quality as as these new ones. So anyway, I'll bring you in closer, like I said. And we'll uh, we'll check this out, and we'll uh, we'll trim some off. Okay, you're a little bit closer now. Um, just wanted to show off these flowers one more time. These are absolutely beautiful. Again, it's a type of Phalaenopsis. Um, it might be a Phalaenopsis cross, but it's a it's a fragrant one. Absolutely beautiful. This flower spike, a little bit closer, um, has. Uh, has no flowers on it, but it still looks healthy, so I'm going to be chopping, or sorry, I'm not going to chop that one off. I'm going to leave it the way that it is. It's looking quite nice, but if you wanted to, uh, rule of thumb is, see these, see these, um, uh, these nodes here? It, as you watch it grow, you'll see that, that they're, they look like little mittens, and uh, a new growth will push through, and then it will stop, and then it will start again. Um, so three of these little nodes along the, the stem, you'll just want to keep three of these little nodes. They actually start closer to the plant, you'll notice them, and then it elongates, and then it will have a little little node here, and then another node. Usually they say keep three nodes and then chop it off. So in this one, you would chop it off maybe right here or here. These ones, the nodes are really close together. So anyway, um, again, I'm not going to uh, to chop this one back. I want to I want to leave this one. I want to see if I can I can get a any more blooms or or uh, a cakey growing on this one. But some of my other ones, I'll put this over on the other side here. Some of my other ones are actually dead. See this one here. This one here is is all uh, brown and crispy. That is a dead uh, dead spike. There's no need to keep that on there. So what I'm going to do is I have uh, some trusty pruners. Uh, household scissors work uh, just as good for this uh, for this uh, activity because you don't want to have big bulky pruners and and try to get in there and do some detailed work. Um, you want to get this as close to the base of the plant as possible without hurting the base. Um, so I'm just going to take my pruners in there, and just prune that right out, so it's completely gone as close as I could get it to the to the base of the plant.
because it's completely dead. If there was still some green spots on this, I would chop it back to where the, 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 the alive material meets the uh, dead material. That's what I would do. But uh, everybody has their own way. Somebody's going to say, no, 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 don't do that. But personal preference is the way to go. After all, you're the one that's going to be looking at your, your plant, right? So make it, make it look lovely the way that you would like to see them. So where do the new buds come from? As you can see right here, I actually just noticed this today, we have a flower spike, a new flower spike. So with Phalaenopsis, you'll see, let me see if I can get this on camera. Um, again, my camera doesn't like to focus. Um, we've got uh, new little roots growing off the, off the stem. Right here by my finger, you'll notice there's a, a green, a gray-green nubbin. That's a root. Um, and then in about the same place as you'll, you'll see a root, you'll see uh, a different looking thing. Usually it faces upwards, and it's usually a slightly different color. It's more of a brown-green rather than a gray-green. And you'll see that there's a, a flower spike that started through here, and it's working its way up. And that's what we see right here. There it is. So I'm just going to leave that. Actually, um, normally I like to leave my, my flower spikes so that they go all natural and wonky. Um, like this one, this one here, I'll bring it back into frame. This one's natural. Uh, it, it goes off to the side. It's, uh, it's quite lovely. Um, but in the, in the store you'll see them grow straight up and then kind of lean off to the side. To do that, uh, save all of your stakes that come with your, with your orchids, because usually you'll always get something with, with a flower on it. As the flower dies, keep, keep the stake and the, and the little uh, clips that come with it. So I've saved this. Just gonna, as this is growing, I'm going to just very gently put the clip on there and hold this upright. This is not going to be a long stem. The, this, the, the flower spike will naturally grow towards the sun. So usually, there's exceptions to every rule. Um, so this, this will uh, eventually taper off to the side uh, wherever the sun is facing. So that's, that's the new spike where you'll expect to find it. It starts right at the base in the crotch of a leaf. Uh, same place that roots do. Um, so there, the only difference you'll probably see is uh, uh, the root is the greenish uh, gray or greenish silver and the, uh, the flower spike is more of uh, like a brownish kind of, you'll, you'll definitely notice the difference. One will grow up and one will grow down. And here we go here. Uh, another scenario, this one here, this is... Uh, the mixed planting that I, I did, uh, or that we did a few weeks ago, um, this flower spike is pretty well dead. It's not 100% dead, but uh, all of the flowers are gone. But the, down here, the flower spike is still good. So what I'm going to do is I'll just chop it off right here. And maybe, just maybe, at this little node, this little node, Maybe it will produce uh, more flower buds here, or it will uh, maybe produce a baby plant. Not quite sure. And then this one here, um, this one's not going to do very much. See this right here? I don't know whether you can see um, right there by my thumb. Let me just double check. Yeah, right, right at this point here. Uh, if I turn it, can you see that there's a little bit of growth starting? That looks like it's going to be a secondary flower spike. So if we were to cut this stem all the way back, we wouldn't get some secondary blooms from that. Um, so again, some people will say just cut the flower spike off because the secondary blooms don't, uh, don't perform as well as a primary bloom spike. Um, but I like, I like to prolong my bloom season as long as I can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, because this one... I don't know whether you can remember, this one got kinked at some point, so we're going to cut that off. 
and we're just going to uh, we're going to cut it back to just just above where that one has uh, has started to grow. I don't know whether you can see it on there, but there's there's the little bit of uh, a growth. Sorry, a little bit of a growth nubbin right there. So we're just cleaning this up a little bit, and this other one has a has a old crusty bloom spike on it. We'll take that off too, just to clean it up. So anyway, there we go. Uh, we looked at uh, where the new flower spikes come from. We uh, cut back some old flower spikes and uh, left them, left some of them uh, to maybe produce more buds, and uh, some we cut right back to the ground. Either way, uh, for a phalaenopsis, uh, you've got the the basic, the basic uh, what to do after the flowers stop um, idea. Again, personal preference is is what it's all about, and what what you're willing to uh, to wait for or look at. So anyway, happy growing, and and I'd love to see photos of your uh, your phalaenopsis orchids, or any of your orchids. Orchids are so beautiful. Um, I actually just uh, ordered some more from uh, uh, a local uh, greenhouse that will be here by the end of the month. So uh, be uh, be ready for some more updates on on some new plants coming in. Uh, most of them are seedlings, so uh, they won't be in bloom, but they will uh, no doubt be interesting to see. Anyway, happy growing, everyone.